Hey traders, in this video I'm going to go over an awesome scalping strategy utilizing two indicators, the VWAP indicator, volume weighted moving average, and the divergence indicator on the RSI. So I want to get something out of the way. How is this thing 100% accurate? And what does that even mean? Well, that's actually a math joke. <laughs> The, the two things you see on your screen, the volume weighted average price and the divergence and relative strength indicator are both mathematical concepts. They're defined by an equation that looks at objective data like price and time then uses that equation and those inputs to spit out outputs. So those outputs are always exactly what the equation is meant to tell you. Now, does that tell you much about price and the market in the future well not particularly it won't tell you if it's going to be a profitable trade it won't tell you what's going to happen in the future but i mean if you ask it what is the volume weighted average price and you give it a series of data and it comes back with the number i don't know 396 in this case um, that 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 is what it is. It, it, it's a mathematical equation. You got a mathematical answer based on objective inputs. What you do with that is well less objective for most people. Um, and the whole goal around trading and using technical analysis and your know, risk management and sizing and all that is is to make the decisions based on objective observations more consistent, as consistent as possible so that you can, well, make them better in the future. The only way to uh, make something better is to measure its progress, or measure where it's at now, figure out ways to improve it, and um, then enact those ways. And to do that, you need to have consistent measurements. And the only way you can get consistent measurements of something as chaotic as the market is to use mathematical equations that use objective inputs. So that's what I mean by this uh, indicator is 100% accurate. It always tells you exactly what you are asking it to tell you. The volume weighted average price always tells you what the average price is weighted by individual volume over time. That is literally what it's telling you. A divergence on the relative strength indicator is literally telling you there's divergence in the relative strength of price over time along some length but what that actually means is and, and how we're using it here is we're using the volume weighted average price as a rough estimate of trend um, as trend is deviation over time in one direction over the other if the volume weighted if price is below the volume weighted average price then it's safe to say that it is deviating in a downward manner because it is currently below the average, if that makes sense. That's a that's the statement of fact. So we're going to jump right into it. But first, if you're new here, I'm the Augur. I'm a stock trader and options dealer. I talk about technical analysis, my trading, my business, finance, economics, all that. So if you like that stuff, make sure to check out the channel. All right, let's go. So... This is a powerful combination, um, and it works for a couple of specific reasons. First of all, um, you're not going to get many trades, so you can always set up a chart to make it look like it's awesome. That's why I started here. It was a particularly good time for this indicator combination strategy. And the way this would function is very simple. The volume weighted moving average price is just that. Um, it goes ahead and takes average price over time. Uh, they usually start at the beginning of the day, so it's just average from there. Then when there's more volume, the average is, is like that price is weighted more in the average. When there's less volume, it's weighted less. So it's it's volume weighted average price. Uh, it's a very, that's a very true mathematical definition, right? They, like if you know math, it, it the name is exactly what it is. Um, and divergence is divergence on the RSI. So basically what we're looking at down here is momentum in a lot of ways. You can see um, as the RSI peaks up towards the top and then starts to fall down, what that is is a dropping off in momentum while still maintaining higher prices. 
Uh, that's why these lows are getting lower, but they're still coming up to the top here, if that makes sense how that indicator actually functions, because it's a moving box function. So what it does is as it moves up, the, the box comes up with it, and it shrinks because it's moving slower and slower. And then as it shrinks, but it's still hitting the top, so it's still going ping, 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 it's also starting to hit the bottom of the box a little bit. It's starting to go down, pull towards the bottom, and that one hits the bottom of the box. See how that works? Um, so this is basically just a keeping a moving box on side with trend. Uh, and then when it works, it can work very well. Like we can see this literally like top called it. Uh, and then you could, you know, you had to go take it down there into another profit you could take anywhere down there. Basically, if you took this thing, um, you had quite a while where you could have taken profit anywhere and made money. This one was a little bit quicker, but same idea. It came up, it basically nailed the top. You could have just based, if, if you did buy that, you could set a stop right above that bar more or less. I don't know where that would came in, but you'd ignore that usually. Um, and then yeah, you get a couple of entries. So it works great. And it's the strength. When it works, it, it, it works great. Um, problem with this indicator, and I'll show you the weakness to it right now, is that in a lot of markets, you don't often get what you're looking for. Like So you got a little bit of what you're looking for there. Um, or you got a bull, it, it's under the line, you got a, a bear signal, so you got one sales. Didn't really get an exit, but you know, you probably could have made money there if you're quick. Um, but then like, these are just all, as it gets another line there, it just gives you bull signals under the line until it gets all the way down here. And then vice versa here, once it gets above the line, like most of these are bear signals, all the way above the line. <laughs> uh, so sometimes you get, you know, you get one here, uh, you get a little one there. Um, let's see, you kind of get one there. Let's see, like you didn't get that one because it was above the line, then below the line. So you got nothing. You got nothing in all this, this whole day. You didn't get a single trade, basically. And this is looking at a one minute chart, so you really can't get that much faster than this. That whole day, you really just got a failed trade. You know, let's trade at like six in the morning. And let's trade at like six in the morning. You didn't get any trades that day. This day, ah, uh, you got a good one right there. Um, you got a little really early in the morning. So you got two. But the problem is for all, for all the bad signals, basically relative to all these that you have to ignore, uh, you could have taken these. But for the ones you do have to ignore because they're on the, you know, they're bull signals under the line or they're bear signals above the line, all the ones you'd ignore, um, relative to the ones you can take, there's so many that it becomes a tough strategy to play for another reason, which is time effective, uh, which is something most people don't think about. Um, at the end of the day, trading is a business and it needs to be effective time-wise. If you are only taking like six points, but you can take that six, ten points like almost every single time you can get it, but it's very long amounts of time in between, you need to take huge risks on those that you that, that show up for you. So if those don't work out, you know, it, it, just, it can become a very tough strategy to play really quick. It's... It, like anything else in this game, it's gonna be a lot more about your risk management and your sizing. Um, and I'm sure, like, if you kept this, if you kept this in the back of your mind, along with other stuff, and you know, took a little whack at it when it did show up for you, maybe it'd be a great addition to other things you're doing. But it's, I, I don't, I just don't see this becoming the backbone of someone's work. Um, but at the same time, I do that, I do that same sort of thing where I have a couple of different tips and tricks that I that I have that work, and I'll use them when they show up because none of them really show up at the same time so there's always work to do if that makes sense but yeah that is the rsi and vwap divergence strategy it's actually more common than you think a lot of people try it because it does if you back test it correctly i mean it's incredibly hard back test to build once you start throwing in um a filtering indicator it's becoming something i'm not going to try to build for a 10 minute video but and i'm not going to play to i'm i really unless I do it by accident. I really don't want to plagiarize someone else's indicator, so these are just the standard built-in indicators I can talk about. So I'm either going to try to attempt to build my own to show you guys, or I'm going to use the standard one trading view applies. I know most creators on here really wouldn't mind me um, showing off their equations if they're, you know, if they've released them open source to the public, but at the same time, I don't feel that's very, uh, it's very genuine, right? So... <clears throat> I'm not going to do that. So these are all just the standard trading view indicators. Anyone can pull them up anytime. And I mean, they're, they're these are most of the standard indicators on trading view are all equations from like the 60s and 70s too. All the standard technical analysis people use is, is old math these days. Well, but we have to get through all that old math to get to the new math, right? 
So anyways, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, make sure to uh, like and subscribe, follow my channel, and uh, check out more of my technical analysis videos. Bye-bye.